Praise God. Whew. Man, this is an awesome day to be alive. I'm so thankful for this day. I'm so thankful to, to uh, get to minister this day on Father's Day uh, in honor of our Father. Oh, my God. Whew. This, is, this one's a doozy, folks, I'm telling you. I've said that a hundred times, maybe a thousand times on this uh, journey, but I, I do believe this is it. This is it. This is that. Um, if it's your first time, you'll have to listen to a few other teachings, maybe, but I have to move into this um, because this is the this is where God wants us to be now. It's where He's leading us in, and and by the grace of the Father, I'm going to be able to say all this to you. Uh, it's going to be, I'll say this before we get started. It's better caught probably than taught, and uh, we're going to be doing that on Tuesday. And because uh, I'm three or four days into this particular operation now, maybe five days, but. It's really, it's really starting to move pretty fast. Uh, thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you for this amazing, amazing mystery, the culmination of so many years that have gone into this mystery, Father, and, and the understanding of how this works now and how easily it's going to be assimilated, imparted, and operated in throughout your body and I give you glory in advance, Father, for this. Amen. Praise God. Whew. Okay, so turn your Bibles to uh, 2 Corinthians 6, if you will. Chris, is all the lights. I need all, all of them right here. They're not all on right here. Fullness. Fullness. Everyone say fullness. Praise God. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6, uh, we'll look at verse 16. Um, this in the second half of this, he said, You are the temple of the living God. Say the living, that's living Father God, by the way. As God had said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And he says, Wherefore come you out from among them? So when he said, I will walk in them, that word walk in is the Strong's, if you look it up, the Strong's definition means to perambulate. It's a, it's a word, a little word that means perambulate, and, and that perambulation means to walk out in a space, to occupy, to walk in a space. And we're going to understand that a lot more. We, we've, we've touched this as he was touching things as much as he could get over to us. But I think we're ready now um, for this, this level that he's bringing us into. Uh, wow. I pray your eyes, your understanding, understand what, what's going to be said today. Because this is what he was talking about when he said, yours is the kingdom. I, I'm telling you right now, what you, we've been looking at is not the kingdom. That's church. The kingdom is, is an operation of the impossible made possible demonstrated in front of man on a continuous basis. The kingdom is Father God coming down, demonstrating his will. What makes that work is a mystery. And until that mystery is understood, we'll always be on the wrong side of trying to get it to function. If you're on the wrong side, you'll understand what I mean by that. If you're on the wrong side of it, your, your faith will not work the way it's supposed to work. Your faith will, it works. Faith can work on any field because faith is faith. But there is a way of God design. Say God design. And when that, when we get into God's design, our faith will work. And we will begin seeing mountains move. We will begin to see the God of the impossible manifest in front of us. Amen. All right. So with that in mind, I want you to go to... Uh, Amos uh, chapter 9, because ver verse 11 said, it said, in that day, say in that day, which is this day, 
He says, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. I'm going to restore the tabernacle. Amos is prophesying today that God would restore the house of David. He prophesies in, in Revelation that the key to the house of David, I will open and I will give to you and set before you an open door. And he that has the key of the house of David, he openeth and nobody can shut. That's church Philadelphia. That's church we belong to. Last day church. I have a whole series on that. That's the church he's talking about right here. And he's going to talk about an operation here given to that last day church or the day that he restores the tabernacle of David, which is the day we're in right now, the day of the kings and priests, the restoration of the fullness. Amen. Oh, man, is it full. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I might take a lap today. I'm just telling you right now. Victory, you got to follow me. If I go, if I go today, I, I, I'm just going to give you a disclaimer. I might take a lap today. Because I have seen myself running around this place twice already. Praise God. I, I haven't cranked up yet. We're, we're, we're taking it slow. Praise God. He said, so he's talking about that. And he goes, I'll close, I'll close up the breach thereof. And I'll raise up the, his ruins and I'll build it. He's going to restore basically. And then look at verse 13. I really, I'll be honest with you. I, I've heard this preach all the time. I just never really understood it until yesterday. I heard it you have probably too. most of my Christian life, this verse has been uh, quoted, but I really didn't understand it. I just couldn't get my head around it because it says, behold, the days to come the same day and that day of verse 13, the days to come, saith the Lord, but the plowman or the sower will overtake the reaper. Say the sower will run past or overtake the reaper and the treader of the grapes will be overtaken by him that sows the seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and the hills shall melt and I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel so again he's talking about this time where this prophetic time where we come out of captivity but he's giving a mystery here he's saying the sower is going to overtake the reaper and I prayed about that forever and I finally believe I understand this verse now. And so this message today is dedicated to this operation, the mystery of the sower overtaking the reaper. Amen. And we understand how this works. In other words, the sower, now the sower always goes out in front. You, you, you sow the seed and then you reap. But this time you're actually going to move in front of your harvest. And your harvest will then have to catch up to you. And if you are in reverse order, you're working way too hard. Do you hear what I just said? If you're in reverse order, if you're on the wrong side of the mountain, it's going to take a lot to get it to move. If you're on the right side of the mountain, it's going to move. And you'll understand that today as we go too. So let me exhort just a little minute before we kind of move into this um, in, in some of the things we've said about this, um, Hebrews 11 says, now faith, say now faith. Uh, just remember that word faith is uh, P-I-S-T-I-S. So it's pistis. That's the Greek word for faith. I want you to remember that, okay? That's the Greek word for faith. Says, now faith is the substance, say substance, of things hoped for. And the Carl, he's not here today, but he got a revelation the other day. I, I think tickle when Carl gets a revelation. He just like, man, he's like, hum, hum, pastor. And I mean, he comes in and he's like, listen, if it's manifested, it's not hope. That's just fact. He goes, that's just fact. If it's, it's not hope anymore, if it's there. He goes, therefore, hope has to be a future position. Because if it's, if it's there, it's already done. I'm like, yeah. Faith is substance. I like what Justin was saying, the substructure foundation of what, what you hope for. But this is not hope that's originating out of your soul. It's not a hope that's going to originate out of you. It's going to hope that's going to originate out of the Father. The Bible says he's the God of all hope. Say the God of hope fills you with all joy and peace in your believing that you would abound in hope 
It is a spiritual operation of godly hope that has everything to do with a manifestation of your promise, but it's operated not in the now. It's operated from a future position. That's why the God of hope can fill you with all joy and peace in your what? Believing. Because you are not where you are in your believing. And if you are where you are in your believing, you're going to have a very hard time believing. If you're in your circumstance, and I did that. Oh, in the beginning, the Lord let me do that. Dang, that's hard work. Considering where we are now, I mean, facing mountains on this side of the mountain, I'm going to teach you how to get on the other side of the mountain and speak to it. Amen? And it's going to be much more effective when you speak to the mountain from the other side. Oh, glory to God. So he's the God of all hope. Amen. So let's say this left side is our circumstance. You're, I don't know why you're always on that realm, but the left side of the sanctuary is the circumstance. I'm walking on the right side. That is where promise is. That is where God, that is where manifestation, demonstration, everything God has said. See, I, I'd be sitting, I'd be moving over here. But that is where God manifests his glory over here. This is the it factor over here. This is what everybody wants over here. It's what the prophets look into. God speaks from over here. He's over here and he throws a word out to you. I mean, Pastor Chuck and Andres went fishing the other day and they, they put, posted some pictures of fish. I don't know, they superimposed some bigger fish than actually they actually caught. Then Carlos, man, he threw his p fishing picture out there. And I'm like, dang, that fish was as big as himself. That's what God does. He throws his lure into our pond. He throws from here over there to get you to come over here. Because this is where the God of hope operates. Because hope is a future position. This is where faith is supposed to work. Faith is supposed to operate here. Faith is the substance of thing you hope for, evidence, say evidence, of the thing not yet seen. You have not yet seen it on the left side yet because that is where you are. God was trying to get this over to us 15 years ago. I just didn't get it. I'm pretty quick. It only took me 15 years, praise God, really 33, but we won't talk about that, praise God. So when we get over here is where it's all at. God speaks from over here. He speaks from another realm. In fact, this whole realm called your future is already been given. I want you to go to Psalms 139, and I want you to listen to this for a minute. Very powerful. Uh, verse we've quoted a couple times but I'm going to quote it out of the uh, New Living Translation if you want these notes after uh, see uh, who, who we're going to see Carlos just see Carlos and uh, Cody and uh, you can have I don't want you looking at your notes today so I'll give them afterwards but these are golden right here so what you said Psalms 139 verse 16 he says um, this was he says you saw me you saw me before I was born. This is a New Living Translation. It's a perfect translation for this. Say, so you saw me before I was born. Every day, watch this, every day of my life, say every day, was recorded in your book. Woo, there's a couple days that I've got uh, blood, the bread. What, this is my angel's going to ask me in the future, what was that day? Oh, that was the blood that's washed out, praise God. Everyone say, washed out. It says, every day in my life was recorded in your book. Watch this. Every moment, watch it. Every moment laid out before a single day has come to pass. Every day is recorded in your book. Every moment laid out before a single day has come to pass. In other words, this whole day has been laid out in a book. Amen? It's called the book of the Father. It's all in a creative realm called the Father. He is the Father. And he's already, now notice what else he said next verse. He says, how precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. Woo! Not only did he lay out your day, he has a lot. He's thinking about you. He goes, I can't even count them. 
They outnumber the grains of the sand. When I wake, I'm still with you. He's caught up in the Father and he sees all the days that are laid out for us. Listen, there are days the enemy will lay out for you. There are days you and self-life will lay out for you. But then, not only are there days, seasons, a life that's been laid out for you from the creative realm of the Father. A realm in which he created the whole earth with. A realm that his thoughts towards you are not just thoughts, they're creative thoughts. They have power in them. They have authority. They have the impossible in them. They're thoughts that are far beyond anything you could do in the natural. They're far beyond anything any one of us could do. And they're thoughts even for this generation right now. I got news for you. God's not looking at CNN right now to determine his will for this nation. That's the devil prophesying right there most of the time. Excuse me. But it is. God has another thought for this nation and it's a creative thought and he invites us into it that's what it means i will walk in you i will perambulate with you i will come in and we will walk together so we start teaching on this perambulation we've been doing it and how to literally walk into i kind of stumbled in this in the natural because i was sitting in the jordan forever like god are you ever going to get 18 months in the jordan holding his word there and uh, cody like said something to me he said you know i think i think God's already moved us to the promised land. I don't know how you put that, but he come over one morning. He goes, I think we've already moved over. He already called us in. I'm like, well, I didn't hear his voice. Because I'm waiting on a manifestation. See, I was in his keeping his word, and that was a hard thing. I don't have to do that anymore. Thank God I've been liberated. I was waiting. I was keeping his word. I'm waiting on him to do something. So when I'm keeping his word from him, I would I'd get stuck every time I'd go to pray because I would get up to the point of manifestation and nothing would happen. And then I'd go around the word, around the word, around and keep it and keep it. And, and, but then every day it was the same thing. I would get right to that point and I would get stuck. And then finally, because said, we need to move. We, we just walked over. We walked over like they did in the Bible. We walked their steps out. And through that whole process, for the sake of time, because I have so much more to give you today, we ended up getting into realms that we probably wouldn't have walked into if we had not just come out. Then I realized, wait a minute, if we could go to Gilgal, we can go to Jericho. If we can go to Jericho, that means we got to be crowned. If we can be crowned, and the Lord said, you know, you can follow me. Say, follow me. He that followeth me will not walk in the darkness of the world, but have the light of life, and I'll bring you to my Father, and then you really will f- really follow me. And so we, we ended up into Jericho by following him and all of a sudden we're there in Jericho and we followed him up into the right hand of God we followed him up into he goes you you followed me into the father you can follow me in a joint airship I was raised up you were raised with me I was crowned you're crowned with me he goes did I not make you a joint heir are you not a joint heir of that crown he goes are you going to wait for the crown to show up or are you going to follow me so we learned to do that in prayer and we were all we've been doing that and it's been very powerful and then we followed him into Jericho and we went down boom angels bam crown bam and so we started this Jericho model of the glory the crown the ark the angels and things start happening and we're there and I'm like whoa this is glorious and God said you still don't get it do you I said, we're doing this. We're way out there. We're already peculiar people getting on, growing on weird right now, but we're out there. He said, you don't get it. Then I got it. Amen. So the remainder of this message is I got it. Amen. I found the place to get it, to got it. That's Texas slang for those of you that are in the northern countries listening to us. Praise God. So, with that said, <laughs> praise God. Go to Mark 11. These verses have been taught all my life. And wow, what's in them now. Woo-hoo-hoo. We were speaking to the mountain from the wrong place. They ever spoke to your mountain? Completely speaking to the wrong place. I'm going to have to shift a gear to get, get you here today, but let's, let me lay this rest of this foundation. 
So Jesus answering them, verse 22 says, have faith. That word have actually means join. It's one of the Greek words means join. Say join your faith or mix your faith. Join it in God. Join it into the Father. Say join your faith in to God, the Father. If you can get your faith into him, your faith is not going to stay in the temporal realm. It's not going to stay in the realm of circumstance. It, he is going to move your faith forward. That is what God does. He declares the end from the beginning. He stands in the end. And he calls you to the finish line. He calls you to join me in the victory. Join me in the manifestation. Join me in the glory. And we're fasting and praying and sweating and repenting and everything else we do. And we got to do all that. But we still don't have the result yet. We're still chasing the demonstration. And I've been chasing demonstration and I watched my father chase it. And I watched friends chase it and preachers chase it and everybody went out to this realm and I and I've seen preachers get their whole life devastated because they couldn't get high enough the enemy just wiped out because they're chasing this elusive thing we call demonstrative revival Mario Murillo said this of D Dusty Kemp he said that word revival destroyed that man he shouldn't have ever done it I don't agree with his statement but that's what he said if we don't go after it God's way the enemy we have a luxury right now to get above the enemy's warfare. We have a luxury to take off the storms. There's a lot of preachers that don't have that luxury. They don't understand that yet. So they're pursuing something that's provoking a warfare against them. And that warfare is constantly compounding on them because they don't know how to get it off. We do, thank God. But we still haven't made it to demonstration. But we've been chasing it. Amen? And God throws this verse at me this week. And about five or six days ago. And I saw it in prayer. He goes, these signs, which is the same word for miracles. Miracles, wonders, will follow. Watch this. Follow them that believe. I'm like, wait a minute. He goes, you're in the wrong position you're chasing something, and it's supposed to follow you. Now, I've heard that preach. I, I mean, I've been around as long as you have. Listen, we are not to chase miracles. They'll just follow us. But then that's, that's really good. That sounds good, but did it, and, and we don't do anything, but it still doesn't work. Whether you do it or not, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter if you lay the mantle down and you don't chase anything, nothing comes. You chase it, half the time it doesn't come unless it's a gift realm operation. And you can do that, play a violin, and let the, let, the, let the gift just flow. You talk about yourself, there's plenty of them, do it. Never mind. The gift realm doesn't take you in account. It just clicks. You ever watch the gift realm? They're not even, most of them are not even atmospheric. They don't even need an atmosphere. They just click in, boom, 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 things happen. But if you ever watch that gift realm, It'll always get limited. It'll always be a whole sector that never gets touched. Hardly ever. If we're being real. If you've been around long enough and it's being real, it's not unbelief. It's just the way it is because that wasn't designed for that. But the Lord's ministry was designed for that. But his ministry was the Father's ministry. His ministry had to do with everything concerning us. So he said, these signs, I saw that. And I looked at that. These signs will follow. I say, Follow them to believe say follow I'm thinking all right Lord I've been at this a long time and and we've had a few things following us a few things are following us most of the stuff that's following us I want to leave behind most of that's following us I want to lay in the Jordan and bury it forever I just don't know it's like David said surely goodness and mercy will follow me Man, if you could hear us praying now Tuesday, we'll be a life changer. And the Lord said, how are these things going to follow you unless you're in front of them? He goes, you're on the wrong side of the signs, miracles, and wonders. He goes, I've never denied them. You're on the wrong side of them. You're following them. 
You're trying to get me to do something I've already done. I've already done this. You know that. You know it's a finished work. You just don't know how to get on the other side. I, had, I didn't until then, but now I do. He said, I want you to get on the other side of the signs, miracles, and wonders. I want to teach you how to go into the Father of lights, the Father, the creative realm of the Father, in which every one of your days have been numbered. I'm sure a bunch of those days have a whole bunch of signs, miracles, and wonders in them. How would I know that? Because the Lord Jesus, our prototype for this operation, said, I can only do what I see my father doing. My father worked hitherto and watched me. I'll work with him because he's already worked today because we've already done this once. And I'm going to do it again because this stuff is following me because I've already been here and I've already done this. I did it in the creative realm of my father. Now I'm in your realm. And I'm going to come in your realm. And this stuff I've already seen happen. It's going to follow me. Not where I am right now. It's going to follow me where I was. But where I truly am is in front of all this. I'm not behind. I'm in front. The Lord said, I don't do anything unless I first see him doing it. In which every day of his life, he had already seen that day, done that day. My father worked hitherto. Hitherto, he's already done this. Now I'm going to work. It's not I, my father's going to do this because he already did it. I'm just going to do it. And so when he was doing it, he says, Father, we already did this. But let's do it now. But see, that realm that he was in the father got superimposed into our realm. How do we go do that? What he wasn't saying was this. I stand in the present My father speaks to me in the present. I see what he wants to do, and I do that. That's not where he was seeing from. He was seeing in the father. He was doing what you and I do. He got out of the realm. He went up into the father. Why did the Lord say, go up to the father first? Let my father love you. Before we use you, before you go do this joint air thing with us, my father will love you. We're going to get the orphan out. We're going to get the dysfunction out of you. We're going to teach you some things about the father, introduce you to the father, and then I'm going to open the real realm of the father, the glory realm, the creative realm of the father, and I'm going to invite you into the creative realm, which is not here, which is with him. And then I'm going to operate and I'm going to open the creative realm, which is my glory, which is found in John 17, but it's not found where you are, but it's found where I am, but I'll bring you where I am. He's going to love you. And then when he loves you, after he loves you, after he gets you all whole, how many of you are getting whole around here? Why do you think you're getting whole? Listen, there's some serious prayer meetings going on. Tuesdays and Fridays right now. I mean, people are going up in the mountain. I want to get you to understand why you're going up to the mountain. He's getting us whole because he's bringing us into the father of lights now. The creative realm of the father where he opens, say opens, the days. He opens the book of your life. Before you walk in it over there, he's opening that book in him. And he's showing it to you from a realm that's not of the earth. And when he shows it to you, he wants you to know what to do with it. Once he shows it to me, that means I can have it. Once I can have it, I can go now walk in it. That doesn't mean I'm going to come here and walk in it yet, but I can go on, say go on, and I can start perambulating up into the future now. I can do now what I see my father doing. What do you mean by see? You're going to see what he does. He's going to lay a day out for you. He's going to lay a season out for you. He's going to lay a prom, and you're going to walk into the dream realm of the father. Not only are you going to see it, you're going to say it. What did Abraham said? He called things that had not yet manifested in his realm as though it did manifest. So where did he find the place it did manifest? He went into the future through accounted righteousness. How do we know that he got caught up in the father? Because he was working the father's plan. He goes, since you give birth to my son, this is all conceived out of the father. Abraham couldn't get there under the law, but, but, but not before the law, but he couldn't get there because we didn't have this nature. But... God gave him accounted righteousness. He was able to transcend all the way into our covenant, which gave him access to the Father. And he began to dream in the Father's dream. I know he did. That's the faith of Abraham. He was up into the Father's plan. Whenever you dream the realm of the Father, you speak from that realm. You see it and you say it. Here's the difference. You're in him. How many of you watched me walk that thing over the years? about Abraham, look at the stars, get out from where you are, birth from the finish line. Didn't know how to do it because they didn't know we weren't doing it in the Father. We had that miss that step. He goes, that's the only place you can do it because that's where the creative realm is. It's a creative realm. Whew. All right. Are you with me so far? All right. All right. 
So now go to Mark 16. So when the Lord said, follow me, that you may be with me where I am, where does that end for you? Where is the where I am in for you? Follow me into the throne of grace. Follow me into the room I prepared for you. Follow me into the Father's love. What about follow me into the glory of the Father? What about follow me into the glory of him that is to come? What about follow me into his innumerable thoughts towards you and every day is planned and purposed before you ever walk in? What about follow me into the same mantle I had with the Father, seeing, saying, speaking from that dimension, being clothed in the creative realm of the Father, and then turning around and speaking to your present and commanding it to catch up to where you are? Did you just hear that? What about follow me far enough into the Father where you are already walking out a creative realm of the Father called your future, but it's in him. It's a now place in God. It's a future place in you. But when you step out and you come back to your circumstance, you begin to speak to your circumstance. Where are you speaking from? This side of the mountain or the other side? Now you've come from the other side. And you command everything in this arena to follow me. You command it to follow you. How is it going to follow you if you're not on the right side of it? That's where we're speaking from the wrong side because in the creative realm, this realm gets superimposed into this fallen world. And everything about this fallen world must obey where you've come from, where you've been, where you've been dreaming. Because you're not just dreaming a soulish dream. You're in the Father now, the one that created the whole earth with one word that came out of his mouth, let there be light, that realm. Except now you're in him because the Lord made that possible to come into the Father of lights. And you come out from that realm. The more you do it, the more faith because he starts adding his faith to you. And I'm like, whoa, it gets powerful. You come in and you start speaking to mountains now that have always been there called your present circumstance. But you've just come out from a realm, a realm, say a realm. You're now speaking to the present circumstance of your life and say, I command you now to line up. That's what the Lord did. He came from another realm. He was constantly in another realm. When he was walking the earth and the the recorded pages in your Bible, he had already done that. He had already been there. My father worketh hitherto. Now I'm going to work. Yet it's not I. And all of the armies of heaven were with him. Amen. That's our new amen around here. There's only one man that can do that. Praise God. Fortunate for us, he's in every service. Hallelujah. Apollonio. Praise God. great commission go you all the world preach the gospel you can add gospel of the kingdom preach this gospel good news now i understand when the lord come and he goes bless the poor you don't have to be poor anymore i've I've already done this for you i've already done this for you i already knew about the finished work i just didn't know how to get that finished work here stay tuned Verse 17, these signs, miracles, wonders will follow, say follow, them that believe. Do you know what that word believe is? Hmm. It's G4100 posteo. Same word, offshoot of faith. Same one. Faith is pistis. This is pasteo, same root. These signs, miracles, and wonders are going to follow true faith. Faith that's been seated in my Father, which I'm going to teach you how to do. Faith that's been seated in a future position of hope. Faith that has found substance and evidence from a future position. It's come back with the substance. It's come back with the evidence. Because God the Father is going to give you some evidence. It's called invisible. Nobody can see it. Do you have any idea what's about to happen to this place? I can see it. 
Because I'm not here right now. I'm up in front and so are you. By the time it follows and we've been waiting on you, what took you so long? Because when I come out of that realm, I've got something called substance. Faith apprehends substance. I have evidence. I've been speaking from a realm that be not as though it were. I'm in the though it were realm. And now I'm going to come into this be not realm. How are you going to get in the be not realm? If you never get out of the be not realm, you're not going to be not. You be, you're not going to be not what God wants you to be. You're going to be not what you want. Because you're in the be not realm. You got to be in that other realm as though it were. Do you want to be a be not or do you want to be as though it were? Because the be not realm is never going to change. If you've been around long enough, that's the thing about Christianity. You make enough, enough laps, everything's the same after a while. It just sounds different except this. This is not the same. Because this is a realm I just got out from that system. And I've been dwelling in another system. And suddenly I found some evidence and I found some substance over here. And now I can speak from this realm. I can see from this realm. And I perambulate with the Father. And then suddenly, God said, he goes, I said it would follow you. Suddenly, when I came back into this realm, he said, did I not say this realm would follow? You see that? How is it going to follow you if you're not in front of it? How is it going to follow you? Faith was designed to be in front of your circumstance, not right in the middle of it, fighting everything. What we do, we get in the middle of all this thing, and we're fighting everything that goes on, and we're utilizing our faith, and storms are coming. And I, was, I got good at that at one time, but it'll wear you out because that's not where faith was really designed to thrive and prosper. Faith was designed to thrive and prosper up into the Father. See that? Up into the Father. You see that? That's why the Lord said, Oh, you do want to follow me. Believe me, my father's greater than I. Believe me, you want to go, I, my father's going to love you because you need to be loved more than you know. But then, but then after my father loves, we're going to get, you're going to ask. Now we're going to get into an air face. And I'm going to teach you how to get answered prayer from him. I'm going to teach you how he works. I'm going to teach you the realm I came out of. Every day I walked in every one of those red leather edition Bibles, that was a realm I just came out of the father and showed. I'd already walked in that realm. Now, right now, we're sowing. Now, watch this. See, now, watch this. Sower overtaketh the reaper. Watch this. Here's what we do. This is normally where we sow on the left side of the church. We reap on the right side. Or normally, you sow day one. You reap whenever the harvest comes, day 30, whatever it is, day 15, whatever. Right? Because you're sowing in advance. You reap later, right? In the last days, the day Amos said, the day that I restored the tabernacle of David, the day I'd set an open door. Know what the open door is? The Father. I'm going to set an open door to you, to the Father. The creative realm. He goes, now, in this last day, the sower is going to overtake the reaper. So now, this is the reaper, left side, this is the sowing side, right side, future. You're going to sow beyond your harvest field. Did you see that? You're going to sow in faith here beyond where you are, right? So in front, it's going to overtake, outrun the reaper. Only faith can do that, by the way. Your faith can outrun your reap. You need the reap. I get it. I wanted to reap 25 years ago. I want to reap right now. There's not a person in here alive on this planet that doesn't want, want to reap from the Father. But nobody knows how to do it. Because they're in the wrong place all the time. He said, but in this last day, you're going to sow in front. And then you're going to come out of that realm. And you're going to look at this realm and command the reaping to begin. You're going to man this circumstance. Follow me now. Follow Christ in me. Follow me to where I am. Follow me. Say, follow me for where I've been. And everything in there, watch this. Everything that's dead will now live because I've already been where you're going. And the river of life has already poured into you over here. And everything that was dead is living. Now I'm coming over here. You're still dead, but now you're going to follow me into the victory. Because you get to go walk in the victory before your circumstance does. And that's the God design that God has given every one of us. To go walk up in it before you get there. 
Whew. What does the devil want? He wants to bind you up right here. Lock you down or he wants to put a whole bunch of chains, darts, and whatever up in your back. Why? So he can e at least either keep you where you are or pull you what? Back. Ever, any of you ever feel like you're going like this? Because he's got so many chains in you and the glory says, I am the glory of your rear reward. And he cuts all that off. So you can not only be here but move forward. But guess what? Remember in Jericho? We know that the, 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 the God would send those armed warriors in front, right? He sent, and we know with our, with our model, it's the angels. He sent them out in front. But guess what? In, in verse 9, verse 13, Joshua 6, he said, and, the, and the, the armed men will come in to be the rear reward. So he sent a, another batch of armed trained warriors behind them put them in front put the crown the ark and then put trained warriors behind what's the ones behind reapers say reapers the reaper angels the reaper angels they're the ones in the rear guard generally we see the reapers go in front no they're following you in our dispensation they got to follow us they follow Follow. How are they going to follow? The problem is we didn't get far enough into the Father, enough imagery of who we are, obtain the creative realm to come back and speak it. And the Lord said, now you can speak to that mountain back here because you're on the right side of it. He commanded to fall, commanded to move, and command all of this circumstance to follow me into victory now. Oh, if you get this, you're going to see it. You'll see it. I know you will. We're all going to see it. Whew. Kingdom come, will be done. Say, kingdom come, will be done. Mm. Okay. These signs shall follow. Say, follow. What did he say in, in, in um, Psalms 23? Say, goodness and mercy shall what? Follow me goodness i've got the glory of god going in front of me i have the glory of god being my rear reward why does he have to be rear reward because that glory has to follow you with demonstration the way god designed this is to get us connected with the father start sowing in front perambulating in front which we'll teach you how to do on tuesdays and coming now on fridays and once you start painting the new picture in the father then faith it's going to come alive. And you're going to come back and you're going to speak to this realm and command it now to follow you in the rest of your life. Signs, miracles, wonders, goodness, creative things will be following you around. And every time they follow, it'll never surprise you. Although God will surprise you, you know it's coming. We already sowed this. We already sowed this. In, our king, in God's kingdom, you sow in front of your harvest. In the earth kingdom, you sow behind. So when you sow in front, you already know what's going to happen. And you can command the harvest to follow. That's probably why we haven't got anything done yet. So watch this. Whew. Man, I'm telling you, there's faith here. Faith like I've never, ever experienced before. Faith that's going to bring that demonstration out from the circumstances of our life. And follow us in. Whew. Okay, so... These signs shall follow them that believe. The word believe, same word for faith. They're going to follow faith. They're going to follow true faith. The God kind of faith. Faith that moves out in front. Now watch. Them that believe. Say them that believe. The Spirit of the Lord said, go, go, go look at that. When he tells me that, it means go the inner linear, outer linear, whoosh, weak, strong. Go, go look. So I'm, I look at the. I'm looking at the Greek. I'm looking at the interleader. I'm looking at the lexicon. And both the Greek interlinear and the lexicon doesn't matter if you don't know what all that means. I'm going to tell you what it means. Watch this. They both had the same thing. I'm going to read them to you. I think you'll appreciate this. It says, them that believe, the interlinear Greek, those having believed. Say, those having believed. The writers did not know what to do with the translation. He says, these signs, miracles and wonder will follow those having believed. 
Done. Finished. They didn't, so they said these signs will follow those that believe, but that's not. And the lexicon said this. Here's what the lexicon says. Those who have believed. Got it? Wait a minute. These signs are going to follow me, though I'm not in front of them, but I got to get in front of them. It says it's going to follow those who have believed. Past friends. Not believing, have believed. See the difference? When you're here in your circumstances, you're believing God to do something. Why? Because you need him to come invade. You're in the wrong place. You're trying to get him to move into your jurisdiction. Come and fix. We need him to fix us. He needs to fix everything. But we're believing. Everyone, ever, anyone ever done that? I believe God. Having believed is moved on and got a t-shirt saying, I've already done this. I got a t-shirt that I've already believed. I've already seen this. I've already said it. I've already been there. I got the t-shirt. I'm in the Father. I've already seen this happen. I've already seen the miracle. I've already seen the breakthrough. I've already lived the breakthrough. I've spoken the breakthrough. I've rejoiced in the breakthrough. I do it every day. I'm in the future. I'm perennial. the Father. I'm seeing this glorious realm, and I'm thanking him. And the glory of it's glorious. Thank you, Father. It's happening, and I'm in a realm, and my circumstance is not where I am. But when did God ever, even ever consider our circumstance? And I come back in this. He says, now this realm will follow us who have believed, who have already sowed in the future, has already planted in the future, has already seen it with the Father, done it with the Father. See it? Already encountered it with the Father. My Father worketh here. When does the Father work? He's always working. The Father's generating a plan out of himself all the time. He just needs human agency to work with. And he calls us into himself and he transfers this. He goes, listen, what we're dreaming in, this is already done. We're not dreaming in something that's going to happen. It's already done. You're dreaming in a realm that's in front of the realm you're in. We're dreaming. You're perambulating. You're seeing it. You're saying it. But when you go back into the realm you live in, whew. is this too heavy for some of you? When you come back in this realm, see, if you do this long enough, the God kind of faith shows up in you. I mean, that is the lion, the Harley faith. I mean, it shows up in you, and you walk back out of that realm. The first couple times it didn't happen. I just, I'm just perambulating because it's the thing to do because I'm getting bored being where I am, so I need to get in front. Praise God. It's a lot better being in front anyway. Especially when it's God's design. But this time I come back and God said, does any of this look like where you've been? I says, no. He says, then command it to follow you to where I am, to where you really are. Because that's not where you are anymore. You're not here. This is a factual fallen realm. I'm only here in body. My spirit is not in present. Nothing about this realm dictates anything about my future nothing about what i see nothing about what i feel nothing about what i hear nothing penetrates because i have something working inside of me an invisible substance an invisible evidence an invisible measure of faith and i speak from the other realm i dream and i see from the other realm I'm just coming in this realm to command it not to line up, not just line up, but get in order and follow into the future. Follow. And then God the Father, watch this. When you're doing that, then the Lord that was in front of you showing you the Father, he comes now to stand behind you with the Holy Spirit and a whole nother legion of angels called the Reaper angels. You got the ones that went out in the front. Now you got the ones behind. And they start the creative realm for you, commanding this whole realm to start lining up with where you are. That's why he said, send the armed forces in front, but then I've got some reaper ones coming behind, and they're going to sweep up for you. So we're waiting on the river of life to flow to the Dead Sea of Humanity. Walk on out into the Dead Sea of Humanity. 
Walk on out there with the Father because where you're walking, you're not walking in a, in, in a place of defeat. You're walking in the Father's thoughts towards humanity, his thoughts towards cities, his thoughts towards our White House, his thoughts towards this nation. Look, the devil's putting his thoughts on full display. God's got a few thoughts about this nation too. Clothed in the glory. Clothed in the Father of lights. You can't do this without the Father. You do it out of the soul. Trust me, I did it for years. I'd run into one wall after another. I went in the creative realm. And God said, you can birth out of that realm. It's just you don't have the creative realm. We want the creative realm. That one that's impossible. Because every thought I'm sharing with you in the realm you live in is considered impossible. But in the realm I live in. This is already done. It's already fit. Everything I'm showing you, everything you will do. And then so all of a sudden, Kevin said, I gets on TV and he goes, you know, he goes, the devil starts telling me something I can't have. He goes, I just asked for two of them now because I know he's a liar. He goes, but all the stuff I'm already walking in, I had already seen all this, already did all this. And now I'm just walking in it. We were designed that way. That's why the enemy wants to rope you and throw you back into his system. And I promise you, he never wanted you to know this message. I promise you, you can write a whole nother future. You don't have to write it. God already wrote it. He, there's a book up there with your name on it. It has everything to do with your life, your family, your generations, your calling, your destiny, your business. Every single thing about you is already written in that book about your health about your welfare, about the wholeness of your soul, about your children and their children, about the financial state. It's already written in the book. Father already dreamed it. God said, you want to come read my book? Yes. Yes. See, but he's a living God. Yes. Is he a living God? Yes. He goes, you want to read my book? That means we got to walk in this book because we're not just reading it here. We walk in this stuff here. Yes. He goes, I gave you a spirit that can walk this out. And as you're looking at it, reading it, all of a sudden he floods you with the image of your future. And then he kicks your sanctified imagination in and he floods it with himself you know that dream center and then all of a sudden he moves that up into your mouth and you begin to speak things that be not over there but though it was because you're in a though it was position and all of a sudden you get filled enough with this realm over here because at first when you're perambulating you just feel like you going out and do it but then god meets you out there and he starts filling you with the future position he meets you watch this and i'm going to close maybe he meets you. It's Father's Day. It's this message belongs to the Father. He'll meet you with the same glory. He met you in the right hand of God. Now watch this. I'm doing this. He says, now go stand in the earth and do this. Yeah, remember that time he told me to come down. He was trying to teach how to bring this stuff down. Back then it was hard. Now it's easier because we're learning how to do it. He goes, now go stand in wherever you're exercising faith. Do you know that we stood in this service this morning before we ever got here? We stood in a couple services in front before we ever got here. We stood in a revival in this very house before we got here. And we saw the ark come straight down over that camera right there, knowing that God's about to turn this whole center into an international media operation. The glory of God, we were there. We were there. Cody can attest we were there. We were in the Father's plan, and so we got back. I came right back. Now, I'm at my house, but I'm here. I'm standing right up here. You don't know how to do that yet. You'll learn. Trust me. That's what you're here for. You do not think, oh, this is so out there. No, you can do this. Trust me. When you start seeing the fruit, you're going to want to do this. That's why he said the kingdom of God, Jesus was very careful with his words. It's like a treasure hidden in the fields. Why would he call it a treasure if it didn't yield treasure? Kingdom of God like pearl great price. Whatever I can get you to lock on, lock on to what I'm trying to tell you. It's far grander and greater than any. He said, the kingdom is awesome. He goes, all the stuff the Gentile seeks, we'll give that to you freely. If, when you learn to do this. He didn't say church. He said kingdom. When we got back in this realm, I, I got back in the Lord said, stand in the sanctuary. I was at my hot prayer club, but I stand in here. I started decreeing this whole house to line up with where we just were. This house to line up in wholeness and glory and manifested signs, miracles and wonders, manifested glory, worship, salvation, people flooding the altars, 
all of the Father's love pouring out. All the stuff we ever wanted that we are always on the wrong side of asking God for it. See that? You do ask, but then you seek, you knock. What's the door? Do you, I'll op- Why do you say I'm going to open a door when he's answering prayer? Because you're going to go to the doorway where it's at, the Father. And when you go into the Father, whatever you're dreaming in there is going to happen if you don't let go of it. You're going to bring it back here, and you're going to have authority. And you're going to speak, and that realm's going to line up. I'm on the other side now. Say, so if you're on the other side, this realm will obey you. It has to obey you. It obeys that name that you're operating under. Isn't that glorious? Whew, let's give him glory. That's why I'll close with this. In uh, Mark 11, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith. Join your faith into God the Father if you want this to work. When you do that, God the Father is going to position you in his will. He's going to open your book for you. And when he opens the book, he said, Then verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you say unto the mountain, be thou removed, cast in the sea, shall not that in his heart believe those things. Now, what do we know about believe? That's the word faith. What does that mean? Having believed. Having believed. Past tense, when you have believed already those things, then you can say to the mountain, and then it obey you. You see that? You got to get to the having believed position. Not believing, I'm believing God. That's awesome. Thank God you're believing God, but that's not gonna that's not gonna get it. You got to get to a having believed done position. Do you get it? Glory! I know that's a new thought for some of you, and you're registering that. That is going to transform your world. God is about to rock our world. He's already rocking it, praise God. This realm is going to line up with a realm that we're into now with the Father. This whole realm is going to follow us into glory. Whew. If enough of us get going on it, Whew. see that I have given. Let's all stand. Praise God. Huh? Come up here. You read it. Praise God. Come on, man. You read it. Come on. Share it. Come on. He he mentioned. Uh Kevin Zadai, and, and I've been dissecting because we're tracking with God through the word, but he actually died in the operating room and had an encounter with Jesus, and we don't have to die. We have his word, ah. but it's awesome that he said that, uh, I'm not going to do the whole details, but he, when he was stepping away from his secular job as an air, airline attendant, he, he got a, a confirmation word from a prophet, and the prophet told him, remember, there's three doves and three ketchups three doves and three ketchups. And then later, he ended up speaking to the same prophet, and the prophet told him, now, walk away from your job now. And he said, I just did. And he says, as this phone call was going, there was three doves flying outside in front of his house in the middle of the, like, in the, it was already nighttime, and that there was even people taking pictures of it. And then he said that afterwards, a FedEx truck or one of these delivery trucks pulls up in front of the house and brings him three ketchups. So the... The, these kind of things, these kind of things, there's absolutely no possible way. You, you just can't, only God can do those kind of things. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, the Father's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Ah, man, I'm so glad you shared that. Praise God. You have something? Uh, yeah, he got something. This is a lion, the father's house lion here. Praise God. I just, I just want to build y'all's faith because Friday I experienced the same thing. I was preparing for a Friday night service about an hour and a half. I was actually in the shower, and, and I felt the glory of the Father come over me as I was in the shower. And he brought me forth into where the service was, and I seen myself. I was actually speaking out loud over Carlos, and I was speaking words from the heart of the Father into Carlos with that glory. I almost fell out in the shower. It was so strong. But, see, the Father took me in front to show me what he wanted to 
to do through me. And when we came in here on Friday night service after worship, I said, Carlos, spring forth. But see, I had that God kind of faith. That faith was already up and excited and had life in it because I already knew what was going to happen. And when I stepped in front of Carlos, that same glory, that same presence that was with me an hour and a half before stepped into the midst right there. And, and Father was able to minister to Carlos during that hour. Praise God. So God takes Justin, gives him a word of knowledge into that future position. Now he wants to bring all of us in tracking together. Amen. That full place in God. So your whole life is about always being in front, being with the Father, always tracking in the Father where he is, right, for you. And your past is constantly following you into the victory that's constantly exploding on the inside of you. We should be living a life like that. And God said, you're going to live a life like that now. Demonstration is going to follow you around everywhere. People are going to ask you, why does this stuff happen? It says, because I'm simply doing what I see done with the Father. This realm is just catching up to where we are. We're in front. Amen? Say, we're in front. Well, praise God forever. Thank you, Father, for your glorious word. I need that word, that, that rattle. Because we need to go out in front and, and prophesy to some dead bones to, to rattle, to live. I hear the rattle. And you got a word. Come on, Kim. Praise God forever. Whew. This is for you. Ooh. It's been rattling around the whole time. And the Lord kept showing me the hours and the hours and the hours that you've spent paving the way here. And understanding the future realm and the creative realm. And he wants you to mark today as a, as a time that you've passed over a threshold. And it's a threshold to the world. You're no longer this house. You're the world. And you're going to see there's going to be offers from all over the world for you to come and establish what you've established here. And he'll make the way. That door that's been opened will never close. There's no man that can stop it. He's not going to allow you to stop it. <laughs> it is open. <laughs> that's a word right there. <laughs> I promise you, if anybody was going to stop this, it would been me. Not me, but that other thing. Whoa. Whew. Oh, my friends, God so believes in every one of us here. We just got a little taste of the plumb line just this last month, but we're fixing to get a whole taste, and leaders are going to rise all over the place here, and many of you are going to be sent out from this place in the glory of God, and suddenly you're going to say, this kingdom which is easier for me to lead somebody or get that person out of the wheelchair because I've seen both of them today and they're both going to happen because my father's working now hitherto and we're working with him and we can only do now what we see him doing and man does he have a big heart man oh. wow amen